Hey guys, it's Nancy. It's Sunday morning and I am getting ready to sew the signatures into um, this 120 year old book. Um, I don't think I've ever done a video of sewing in signatures, so that'll be different. Alright, so I'll show you how I prepare my pages. So I have I'm going to put in eight signatures. Each signature has four pages. So in order to um, kind of uh, assemble these, I'm just going to, I, I just rough attach them with this, but I don't need that big and it'll be really difficult to stitch if I did do that big. So um, I'm going to put paper clips close to the um, fold and I use this uh, these plastic coated ones so that they don't tear the paper sometimes metal ones will tear um, and some of these pages already have embellishments on them because I this these are their pages left over from the book that I originally ripped apart the journal that I ripped apart okay so that's number one uh, got my little post-it notes here, so I'm going to just mark this as number one and put it at the top so I won't get my signatures upside down. I have done that before. I hope you're crafting along with me, otherwise this is going to get super boring because it's the same process over and over again. Um, that's number two. I filmed a video earlier this morning of Craft Along With Me. <laughs> Yeah, camera stopped recording. This is frustrating when that happens, because then you forget what you, what things you've said. And am I repeating myself? Are people think thinking I'm losing my mind. Well, you wouldn't, right? You wouldn't be too far off if you did think that. But anyway, so I was talking about my experience, my first hurricane. Um, and how that went, so I think I'll repeat that story. So as, if you're a follower, you know I have two sons, both adults. Um, one son is in the Navy and he lives out in Halifax, Nova Scotia with his wife and my two grand kitties. And my other son is turning 26 tomorrow. He lives uh, not too far from here and um, also uh, has given me two grandkitties. I'm never going to have children, grandchildren. I just wake up, up every morning to new photos of the grandkitties and what they've been up to. Um, so Jordan and I flew out on the 6th. So that was last Friday. Hurricane Dorian was expected on the 7th, on the Saturday. We had rented an Airbnb house in Lawrencetown. Lawrencetown? Which is about half an hour from Halifax. Beautiful house. And the owners are super, super nice. They took very good care of us and um, were concerned about our comfort and safety and I'm sure they were having a num number of fits themselves worrying about their house because of the hurricane but anyway we got there early in the morning 9 30 it's a two-hour flight and it, we left early got in early and uh, so we couldn't check in until the cleaner was done with the house but I organized this is 
Yeah, that's a tuck. Um, I organized uh, an early check-in. So we went, we drove from the airport, got a rental, and uh, went, picked up Mark, went out for breakfast, and um, once that once breakfast was over, I had a message that the cleaners were gone, head up any time. So we went to the cottage, and um, my daughter-in-law, she was supposed to get off work at five. She called and she said um, that they were letting her go at one, I think. Um, so that was good. When Andrea got there, um, we went and got some groceries and uh, she was all prepared for the hurricane. Uh, being a native maritimer, so she had brought in a box of candles and headlamps and um, canned food and bottled water. We were all set. I went to the liquor store, also set. Um, then we went home and Mark cooked us a beautiful dinner. On the barbecue and like I said, it was a gorgeous house. Um, if you are thinking of traveling to Halifax and you're interested in knowing what this property was, let me know and I will uh, give you some information about this property. Beautiful, right on the water, the giant deck, um, everything was very nicely decorated and all of the comforts of home for sure. Then um, one of the things that I wanted to do on this holiday was help Andrea to learn how to sew. She had gotten her grandma, or sorry, her grandmother's mother's old Kenmore sewing machine um, and uh, her mother her mother died when she was a teenager she's one of three girls there's also a son but none of the girls learned how to sew which is a shame and I said why didn't your mother teach you to sew and she said she was too busy <laughs> well I can understand that um, so it hadn't been used in years. So that night I took it all apart and got all the dust out, uh, cleaned it up, oiled it up, put it back together, threaded it, and it purred. And I said, you take care of this because this, this machine is a workhorse. I said, what did you bring to, to sell? Well, nothing. So I said, well, tomorrow we'll go to the fabric store and we'll get a pattern and some fabric and we'll just do like a, a tote bag or a stuffed animal or something simple, right? And, uh, but I had some paper napkins, so I was just showing her, look how good it, it stitches on these paper napkins. <laughs> and, uh, So that night we just relaxed and the kids watched some TV and played video games, that sort of thing. And then the next morning Andrea and I went into town, went to the fabric store. It was just starting to rain, starting to get a little windy. The fabric store was closed. There's a sign on the door saying that because um, the Halifax transit system had taken buses off the road they decided to close as well which was disappointing and so there was a Walmart we went to the Walmart couldn't find anything like we could get fat quarters and stuff but I mean what was what's the purpose of that getting cheap gross fabric that you don't really have a lot of choice about Um, and I said, well, let's go to, and there was, and no patterns, right? So then we went to, 
Mm. Michaels. Again. Nothing. We had been to the Salvation Army the night before. I did get thread at Walmart because they did have good thread. They had Guterman at Walmart, but that was it. And uh, that was all. That was all she wrote. And I said, "Well, I guess we'll have to wait till Monday." Um, we had planned dinner that night was going to be tacos and the wind is, had, by the time we got done at Michael's, the wind had really picked up. It wasn't raining too hard, but the wind had really picked up. And I said, do you think we should uh, cook our dinner for lunch? And she thought that was a good idea. Um, this isn't going to fit in as it should, but I just kind of want to make sure that the lace has got lots of room in between. Yep, that's going to be fine. And it's a good thing we did cook dinner because um, after, oh shoot, I lost one, two, three, four. After lunch, we all kind of kicked back on the couch and turned on Netflix. We were watching um, uh, Glass, Glass Castles, and uh, it was a book I read. It was a biography of... Jeanette Walls, and if you haven't read the book, look for it. It's a couple of years old, probably, mm, so I'm guessing it's eight or ten years old now. And Woody Harrelson plays the father, and uh, we so we will all watch this movie together, and then, and I mean it was really blowing at this point. The there was trees in the back that were really bending. <laughs> the owner called, or no, she messaged me and she said, how's the water out front? And I said, oh, it's, it's the same as before. I was keeping an eye on the, the water situation out back because we were right on the water. And I thought, hmm, maybe she's confused. She said out front, but the water's out back, but maybe they consider their back their front. I don't know. So I'm just going to turn this around. I don't know if you'll be able to see this because I got tucked right up against my boobs. And I'm using my um, paper piercer tool. Actually, it's a bead reamer. Got it in the jewelry section at Walmart. I have two of them. They're not great because um, it's got a bend in it and the tip. I have to keep straightening out the tip, which sucks. Okay, there's one. Anyway, um, just as the climax of the movie. She's going to visit her father, who's dying. Boom. Power goes out. So not only do we not have power, we also don't have water, because it's on a well, so the pump's not working. And then, I think Andrea was the first to notice. She happened to be looking outside, out the front door, and she said, we gotta move the cars. <laughs> so we go out and look. And I mean, we were on a road and there was probably another mile of road towards the ocean. But the ocean the, the, had all surged forward. Um, it had come up uh, a good step and a half up the front porch. Um, water was up to just below the doors. And it never occurred to me that the water would come up the long way. I was expecting it to come up the back where it was really close. Ah, what do I know about oceans? I barely see a lake anymore. Anyway. So Jordan went out and moved the cars. It was still, it wasn't raining very hard.
but there was a lot of wind, a lot of trees down. Um, there was a house being built next to where we were. And uh, the lumber was everywhere. The Tyvek somehow got blown off and was wrapped around trees. A guy came driving up in a pickup truck while we were standing outside surveying the damage, watching the ocean lap up onto a uh, car and a truck that were, I don't know, 500 meters up the road. And he got, so he pulls up in his pickup truck. He says, have you, have you seen a canoe go by? <laughs> no, we didn't. But he had lost his canoe. I know you can't see me doing this. I've got it like in the fold of a, a phone book. And I have a template that I'm using to know where to poke the holes. So that night we all went to bed early. Well, we had, uh, I made a giant chef salad for dinner. Um, so that was good. But so, uh, the next morning, still no power. And, but the, rain, the, the storm was over. So we put a pot of water on the, there was a, an, I don't even know what you would call it. Anyway, a place where you could put a pot on this barbecue. So we boiled a pot of water, made tea, and went out and surveyed the damage. Um, it was still quite cool, but we, you know, put on our sweatshirts, went for a walk, check out the neighborhood. All the water from the front had receded again, which was good. Um, There's quite a few trees down in the back. Um, Mark and Andrea went home so that they could check on their house and their cats. There was n they never lost power in Halifax. Well, most of Halifax did, but their place in Halifax. Uh, the neighbors said. Um, that the lights flickered a couple times, but they never lost power, which was excellent. Uh, cats were fine. So, we came back. We went for a ride, ride along the beach, um, and uh, did some beach combing. Andrea wanted mussel shells to make a project, and also interested in beach glass. So we, we spent an hour kind of doing that. That was nice. It was good to get out in nature. All right, I'm doing this kind of backwards so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So this is my template. It has holes poked in it. So I'm sort of centering that in the bend, shoving it in that part of the phone book and keeping it partially closed. using my pokey tool to poke holes through all the pages in the signature. And then you can see the holes have come up on this edge. Alright, no longer need that. Seven, eight, six. I'm going to pause the video for just a minute while I go and get me, me, <laughs> go and get my binding thread and needle and I will be right back to show you how I do this. Alright, I've got my stuff that I need to sew in the signatures. Um, this is book binding thread. Um, I get this at a local art store and this is um, wax for thread. So I'm not going to get all of the stitches in with one um, 
length of thread so I'm, I will be sewing in a couple and then knotting it off and then sewing in a couple more so in order to make the thread go through a little more smoothly I just run it through the wax a couple of times and then thread it through this big needle the needle doesn't have a big eye though that's just wax um, but big enough that you can get your thread through okay then I'm going to tie a big old knot at the bottom so the spine this is going to be a hidden spine um, that I use I make by using a piece of fabric and some cardstock and I'm going to start with the first I'm going to start with the first uh, signature at the front so this is the top of the okay I'm going to sit down now <sighs> and then I will my needle through there and hopefully I will be able to get all of the pages yep no problem at all and then back through here just make sure that the thread is pulled all the way through and it's not caught on the um, paper clips or one time I ripped an envelope well, recently I ripped an envelope um, getting it caught on the thread so you gotta be careful okay, that time I didn't get all of the pages that time I did take long to do it this way um, it's the going into the fold that's the most difficult part making sure that you get all of the pages on So, now we want to make sure that this is tight. I'm pulling my thread tight and I'm going to do a knot. Okay. start at the bottom here and I can take these paper clips off give me a little more room to work okay. so then I want signature 2 And this time I will be starting at the bottom of the signature and working my way up. Anyway, back to the story of the hurricane. Um, so Sunday, uh, after Mark and Andrea came back from checking on their place and their cats, came back and it was a beautiful sunny day. Um, we hung out on the deck and made, seems to be a, I think I missed a hole here. I 
did have it. Um, there was a lot of trees down on the property. Um, we couldn't do anything with the trees because they were uh, hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So we uh, built fire after that we came back from the beach and um, and then we because we still had no water, no power, we went back into Halifax and had dinner at Mark and Andrews. And while we were there, um, we just used some scrap fa fabric and I showed Andrea how to thread her machine, how to um, thread or wind a bobbin. Uh, and then I took it all apart and made her thread it herself. Then I took it a bit apart again. I said, thread it again. And I said, if your machine ever, you ever have trouble with your machine running, even if you think you've got the uh, thread in there correctly, take it apart and rethread it. It's probably a problem with the threading. At least that's always been my experience. Practice bringing the bobbin thread up to the top. And I said, if you ever can't figure it out, look for a YouTube video. So we cut up some scrap fa fabric and she practiced sewing. So that was good. Um, oh, we had a shower, <laughs> individually, <laughs> uh, and then uh, Mark, or Jordan and I just went back, Mark and Andrea stayed in Halifax that night. Next morning, still no power, but as, oh sorry, as we were driving back to Lawrence Town, we went through Coal Harbor and we started to see houses with lights on and street lights. Um, and you have to remember, we're driving through um, like a rather urban area to get there with no st street lights, no uh, stoplights functioning. Everything was um, operating as a four-way stop. Everybody was doing pretty good with the, that whole four-way stop thing. Anyway. I said, Jordan, do you think it's possible that we have power? And I was getting, as more so houses I saw, the more excited I got. And then just before we turned onto the R road where the, the Airbnb was, the power was back out again. I was thinking I might have been doing that backwards, but it's fine. So we called her a night. Next day, we just sort of tidied up our mess and packed up. Um, we left the house in quite a shambles because there had been uh, some water coming through a couple of the windows, so we had towels everywhere. So um, Saturday night, I hung up all the towels. I pinned them up onto hangers and hung them in the bathroom so that they would dry and not get all gross and mildewy because... I mean, there was a washer and dryer there, but again, we couldn't use it. Uh, every dish in the house was filthy because we didn't have water to wash dishes, didn't have power to run the dishwasher if we did have water. Um, yeah. So the next, so we checked out and, uh, I let the owner know, you know, I'm really sorry, but everything in the fridge is going to have to be thrown out. Um, because there had been no power for two days at this point, and the di every dish in the house was filthy. And she said, no, not to worry, that's not a big deal. Okay, see we did three signatures with that one piece.
we went to Mark's. Spend the day with him. Our flight didn't leave until like 4 p.m., I think. So uh, we went and visited Andrea at her job where they had no power. <laughs> but they were there anyway. Um, and uh, oh, the most important thing. Um, we were listening to CBC Radio on our way in, and they were say CBC Radio is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, so it's our national, publicly funded um, radio stations. Um, and they were saying, you know, if you don't have to drive, don't drive. Emergency vehicles were having a hard time getting through. Power lines are down. Trees are laying in the road. And this is. This is what we're seeing. And of course, traffic lights weren't operating. Um, and in fact, they said that in some areas, um, emergency vehicles couldn't get through because they didn't have gas. Like the gas stations, uh, no power, so they can't pump gas. And, um, and that was one of the preparation things they said on Friday, if you um, you know, fill your tanks with gas because you may not be able to get gas and you might need to um, evacuate. And actually we were under a uh, voluntary evac evacuation order uh, at, in the area we were staying, um, but it wasn't mandatory, so we didn't. I uh, wasn't too concerned about safety um, the, the uh, hurricane had been downgraded it actually hit us at a category two I understand so um, but we had we had a full tank of gas. Mark and Andrew had a full tank of gas. We were good. And um, Tim Hortons. If you're a Canadian, you know what I mean by Tim Hortons. So there is nothing more Canadian than Tim Hortons. At this point, I haven't had coffee in three days because... Well, not... Or two days, I guess. Um, and there was a Tim Hortons next to where Mark and Andrea live that had power and was serving coffee. Um, but the lineup for through the drive through was so long, it was blocking the road, <laughs> making a problem for other vehicles and particularly emergency vehicles to get through. Um, we parked at their place and walked over and I bet I waited half an hour in line dozens and dozens of people needing their Tim Hortons. But it was so awesome. And you know, that's just the way Nova Scotia is. People are so kind and so nice. Um, so I had a lovely visit with the man in front of me and the man behind me. Uh, they were both Newfoundlanders actually. Um, but they had lived in Halifax for years and years. Uh, You know, and we just, you know, chatted about our experiences and, you know, where are you from, who do you know, <laughs> kind of thing, which is typical Maritimer conversation. And um, there was a man standing a couple people ahead of me with two little girls. They were maybe, I don't know, four and five. And it had to have been a long wait for them. And then one of the customers at the very front came walking back along the line and handed each of the little girls a bag of cookies and said, here, this will make your wait a little shorter, I hope. <laughs> Isn't that nice? And, um, we went to the airport. Everything seemed to be on time. 
The one thing that I didn't get while I was in Halifax was any seafood. Um, so we left early so we could have lunch at the airport and I could have some lobster. So I had a lobster salad sandwich thing on a brioche bun, which was good. So I got my lobster and uh, this one's got an extra hole. Well, some of the pages were used. They have different holes. They were used in the original uh, creation. Flight was good. It was a little late, but a little bit of turbulence, but nothing too terrible. Then came home, and I got a message from the owner of the Airbnb thanking me for taking, not to worry about the mess that we left, and thanking me for taking care of their property during the storm. So even though it was not ideal situation, we made the best of it and we just really had a good time. You know, read books, relaxed, napped. You know, what else do you want out of a vacation? I wasn't there to sightsee. I've been to Halifax and Nova Scotia several times, seen all the big um, attractions. You know. I just want to spend time with my kids. Relax. It was a good, um, it was a, you know, we don't plan to have a hurricane, um, but it would work out for all of us because uh, I, Jordan is a musician, so he often has weekends where he has to perform, so he didn't have any gigs that weekend. Um, I was, my student hadn't started at work, so I didn't have to be at work for that. Um, Mark was able to get time off. He was able to get a little bit of leave. The only one that had to work was Andrea. And even she got to leave early on Friday. So, And we did go visit her where she was working. We're getting there. We're on to the sixth signature. Just three more to go. I have been thinking about going on a crafter's retreat. I googled um, I just put in Ontario crafters retreat into Google last night and I found a couple uh, that are coming up this fall so I'm thinking about doing that by myself um, just so I can have a whole 
weekend without any responsibilities. Just, just craft, relax, get my creativity on. And there's different options. There's one that I was looking at that's a farmhouse. And there's one that's at a hotel. An inn, I guess. Um, so I haven't really decided yet. I haven't discussed it with the man either. <laughs> Not that he would care. He has a week off in October himself. For uh, He works at college. So they have a reading week in October. So I'm not sure what he wants to do. I can get the week off. Uh, wouldn't be a big deal. thing in. Give it a shot. See how far we get. as far as we're going to get with that thread. I think I'll knot it this way. So if you've seen my uh, thrift haul video, oops, I've used some lace from the thrift haul I did yesterday, thrift and yard sale haul, and uh, I also used a couple of pages of coffee dyed paper that Catherine from Sunnyside Journal sent for me in the happy mail earlier this week, if you saw that video. Um, I have to get some more of this thread, I'm running out. I'm telling you, the wax really makes a difference. Um, so check out the notions section at your uh, sewing shop or quilt shop. I try to use, I mean, I've had that for a hundred years. because uh, I used it when I was hand quilting. Um, but I try to use repurposed items as much as possible. Even this um, box of paper clips was 50 cents. Uh, I've got to finish off this last one. So 
sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Oh, I broke it. I think that's going to stay. Didn't know my own strength. I'm just going to restitch that. I think it's going to stay, but I don't want to make any boo boos. but not least Last weekend of summer here. Well, everywhere. And it's not it not very summery, that's for sure. We went outside a bit this morning, have coffee on the porch, had to put on the house coat. Put the cat on his harness so he could go outside. He loves to go outside. But he's not an outdoor cat. And I don't even have to tie him, I just have to put him on his harness and he seems to know that he can't run away. If he can get out the door, he will, and he will run like heck. But if I put his harness on him, I think I missed this. Come on, you. There we go. And then it started to spit. And then it started to rain. I think it's stopped now. Okay, here's that then. So that is the signature sewn in. Now, um, this method is uh, a Nick the Booksmith method, so I'm not going to um, video how this all gets glued together. Um, I don't think that would be fair to Nick, uh, but if you are interested in learning more about this method, absolutely sign up for her class, and it's the uh, Victorian Ladies Handbook 
or the scholar's ledger it's that's um the name of the class i believe that's the projects that are made in that class anyway so um i fully <clears throat> endorse that class i love how this finishes um this little envelope that I'm doing right now, this was inspired by uh, Klimmy's Creations. I'll try to link that below. I have two of them in here. There's the other one. So I had to make sure that the, the ribbon was in there before I started stitching. So I just used a little scrap of washi tape to hold the, this is seam, seam binding, to hold that in place so it didn't get all weird. Um, so, it's a little envelope and you can open it up and put journaling in there and it's using book pages from um, Edith Holden not identical to Clemmy's but it was certainly inspired by Clemmy I give her all the credit She used um, botanical images from Tim Holtz. I just hand cut, fussy cut um, Edith Holden images. Okay, so that's what that looks like. It will go right in here. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, there is a process to um, gluing in this uh, signature or sorry the signature block and again I'm not I'm going to leave that up to you to uh, take um, the class anyway so thanks so much for watching I hope you found this sort of interesting <laughs> just to see it's not bad you can actually yeah anyway thanks so much take care